trying to do today is we want each user in our database to be able to have multiple cars. Now, probably most of you guys don't have multiple cars, but that's okay. We'll, we'll pretend just for the sake of the exercise, all right? Um, now, the, the other relationship that you guys can see, or first off, what, what do we call this kind of relationship where one user can have many of something? So, a one to many, right? So, one user can have many cars. Cool. All right. Now, we also have this other relationship here where each user can be on multiple teams, right? Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes you might be in a league where it's like you're only on one team, that's it, right? So we'll kind of pretend like we're doing our algos teams because one day maybe you're teaming up with one person and another day you're teaming up with someone else. So you're not always on that same team. So one user can have multiple teams, but there's another thing over here. Each team can have many users. What kind of relationship is that? Many to many. Many to many. Oh, many. Yep. So normally if we were doing this just in regular MySQL, how do we handle those many to many situations? <coughs> we create, uh, uh, we create uh, a join, join table uh, at the bridge between the two as a bridge, yeah, exactly. So we've got this middle table that's going to connect each user with a team, right? Cool. All right. And we'll have multiple records in that table so that uh, we know how these relationships work. All right. So what I thought would be kind of cool is if we would go into MySQL Workbench, which you guys have seen before, and just sort of model out this relationship in there before we actually do it in Django, just so we get a, an even better sense of what we're doing. So I've got MySQL Workbench open over here. I'm creating a new one of these EER diagrams. Let's see if I can make it any bigger. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, very good. So let's just create our user table in here. We'll call this users. I don't think I'm going to do the timestamps just for the sake of time. So we've got an ID field, right, which is going to be our primary key. And then I'm going to check this little box here to auto increment that. Can you guys see that okay? It's super small. Good grief. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, all right. My apologies. So um, we're going to do first name. And we'll say that's a varchar, I don't know, 255, last name, 255, right? Okay, cool. And then we'll have an email address, same thing there. All right, very good. If I close this out, there's my diagram here. So I've got my users table, great. Now let's create a uh, cars table, right? All right. So I'm going to create this other one here. Call this cars. And uh, again, we're going to have an ID. We always need that. That's going to be our primary key. And then that will be auto incrementing. Now the things that we're going to have for a car is just going to be the make, right? The company that builds this thing. I'm just going to leave that bar chart. I don't care anymore. Uh, model, the model of the car, right? And then finally, we're going to want a year. Okay, and I'll just make that an integer. Int. Okay, very good. Close this out. So now what our job is, <clears throat> is we want to say one user can have many cars, right? Okay. Does anybody know how I create that connection here inside my SQL workbench? Oh, yeah. It's going to be this little guy, right? This little one to n. Yes, you're absolutely right. So I'm going to click cars. Did I click the wrong one? No, that's right, right? Okay, so I'm going to click cars first and then go to users. <clears throat> and now you can see that in my. Uh, in my cars here, I've got this user's ID int. Now I can change that just to be a little bit more explicit. I could say user ID, right? Because it's just one user who owns this specific car. Now that's not exactly true about reality because we know that a car could have multiple owners. 
cars, right? You could have more than one person on the pink slip, but let's just pretend that each car can only be owned by one person. All right, cool. Now I want to create our teams table. So let's come over here and create another one. Teams. Okay. Here we've got our ID, of course, auto incrementing. And then I'm going to have a name for each team. So leave that. And let's say each team is going to have a mascot, right? Or Algo's mascot. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much all we need now, but now we need to connect the teams with the users, all right? And this is where we get into this many-to-many -many situation because we want each user to be able to be on multiple teams, and we want each team to have multiple users, all right? So instead of clicking the, uh, the one to N like I did before, I'm going to click this N to M, right? I haven't used this in a while. All right, so let's click on Teams, and then let's click on Users. Check it out. It's, it's created this middle table for us, right? So Teams has users, and inside there, I'm going to have a Team ID. Let me change that. And then I'm going to have a User ID. OK? So what that means is this specific table here is just going to have a bunch of different records that connects one user to one team, okay? And that will allow us to accomplish this many-to-many -many relationship that we were trying to do. Does this make pretty good sense to you guys? Did many of you guys get a chance to do the, the uh, SQL Workbench stuff in WebFun? Yeah. Yeah? Fair amount of you. Okay, fair enough. Cool. All right. So this is what we're trying to accomplish in Django. Sound good? All right. Any other questions before I get to Django? No? The one to n and the one in yeah. this one to n. Oh, it's a non-identifying relationship versus an identifying relationship. Hmm. So I believe one of them is going to have a. Hmm. I'll uh, I'll look into that for you. Mm -hmm. And you're going into something called into a computer attack. And then, but the computer attack is only has a set of attributes. So it's not really a many, it can be whatever it is, it is always like you know, some limited, something there that's always going to be a set of attributes. Okay. So that's what I feel like it's a head, where it's like, um, I can have, let's say, like, um, yeah, I'll have a foreign key to something, but then that table. So if there's some enumeration going on? Well, well something yeah. like that. It's not like forever expansive. It's just a set amount. Right. Uh, the menu, this could be anything. Huh. Okay. One to end. Yeah. Please remind me. I'll, I'll make a little note to myself, too, because that's kind of an interesting one. Um, one to end in my SQL. All right, good deal. All right, so back inside of our models.py right now, we only have this, this one user model, so we need to create our cars model, right? Let's come down here and do that, down at the end. So I'm going to create a class car. And again, that's going to extend or inherit from the models.model. And then the fields that we want are going to be 
we make, which will be a models dot char field. Say max length on that. 64. Fairly arbitrary, but whatever. Model. Actually, I'll just duplicate this guy and change this to model. Yes. Thank you for asking. I, I forget that sometimes. Okay, and then the other thing that we want is the year of the car, right? So let's say year equals models dot integer field. Okay, and then finally I want our timestamp. So I want our created at and updated at. Okay. Now, I don't have a relationship yet, but I can add one inside here. All right. So let's say each car has an owner. And we're going to say what kind of field we want this to be. Does anybody know what kind of field I want for, for a one-to-many type situation? I think nobody's gotten to this part yet. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so let's say models dot foreign key. So meaning that each car is going to have this foreign key that points to a specific user in our database. Right? So I'm going to say I want that foreign key to be a user. And where is user coming from? It's coming from up above my user class. The other thing that I'm going to specify is this thing called related name. Okay. And this is going to look a little weird at first, but basically this means that how am I going to refer to these cars when I'm holding a reference to a user? What do I want the user's cars to be referenced as? I just want them to be called cars, right? So if I have, so if I have some user, let's say I have Jessica, she's my user, I want to be able to say something like jessica.cars.all to get all of her cars. Okay, so that's what related name is going to do for us. If I put in cars here, it means that the user object is going to have this extra field on it that I didn't explicitly add up here, right? I don't have a field here called cars. But by adding that related name down there inside the car class, that will give each user this, this new field called cars. Okay. Looks good. So let's see if we can um, migrate this database. Or actually, we got to do two things, right? So every time we make a change to our models.py, we need to make a migrations file. So run make migrations. And then we need to actually migrate it. So for every change? For every change, yeah. Mm -hmm. So right now, I'm still in the shell. Let me exit out of there. Clear out of here. So I'm going to come in and say Python manage stuff. Whoops, not manage. And then make migrations. Okay, so now that we're on a on a um, higher version of Django, we actually have to specify one other argument inside this foreign key designation. So notice here it's saying you're missing one required positional argument on delete, which means what happens when I delete a user, but that user had some cars? <clears throat> what do you guys think would typically happen? Each car has no users? No, because remember, each car is only owned by one user. Oh, okay. so, so if I delete that user that owned that car, the car kind of has to be deleted too, right? That's kind of what it's asking for here. Yeah. So let's see if we can add this in up here. I'll say on delete equals, is it cascade? Now I have to look this up. I forgot what it is. Yeah. Cascade on delete. Django, sorry, I should I should have looked into this ahead of time. I totally forgot. 
Cascade. Here we go. Yeah. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to say models and then dot cascade like this, all in caps. Yeah. Yeah, cascade is all in caps. Oops. Okay. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so we, we've created our migrations. That's nice. Cool. Now let's actually migrate. So we'll say python manage.py migrate. Okay, so we're done. So let's go back into the shell and let's see if we can add some cars for these users. All right, so let's go python manage.py shell. And then over here, remember we had our little SQLite Explorer, so we can kind of take a look at which users we have currently. My SQLite's here, and right now I've got Jessica, Nick, and Steven. Steven got added back. He's lucky. <laughs> All right. Cool. So let's add some cars for them. So the first, the first thing that we need to do every time we get back into the shell is we always need to import the models that we're going to work with, right? Okay, so keep in mind that every time you get into the shell, it's sort of a new session. You need to re-import these things. So I'll say from my main app models, I'm going to import user and car. Yeah, you could do that if, if uh, that works better for you. So what AJ is saying is that when I go into the shell, I can also just go like this, from main.models import star. And that will import all of the classes that are inside that models file. Yep. Yeah, you could do it that way. I'm just being a little bit more explicit so we know exactly what's coming in, right? But you, but you can do it with the star. Could, could there ever be a situation where something goes wrong with, because we use the star instead of, we should always do? Well, the, I mean, I guess the only thing that could really go wrong is if you import star and you thought that you were importing some specific class or some function or whatever, but it wasn't actually included in the file you were importing from, and then you try to use it, well, of course you can get an error, right? Because you wouldn't have access to it. All right. So now that we've, we've imported everything, let's say I want to get Jessica. You guys remember at all how I can do that? So I'm going to say something like Jessica to just create a variable for her. And then I'm going to say equals user.objects.get. And I can see here that her ID is 2, so I can, I can get her by ID if I want. So let me say ID equals 2. I know that's her. Cool. All right. Now let's try to add a car for Jessica, right? So let's do something like this. Car dot objects dot create and we're gonna say what is the model of Jessica's car? What do you drive, Jessica? Honda. Honda. Alright. Why did I say model? That should have been the make. I knew it. <laughs> Alright, cool. Model equals Jessica. Uh Civic. Civic. I was gonna guess that. Cool. And then the year? 2018, not bad. Alright, now what's the other thing that I need to add to this? We've got the make, model, and year, that's cool, but how do I add in the relationship? I want to show that this car belongs to Jessica. So I can say what the owner is, right? I could say owner equals Jessica. Jessica is the owner. Okay, boom. Wait, why are you saying that's a redundant key of the phone? Because the um, user is a person, right? Mm -hmm. and the owner is a person. Yeah. So you're saying owner has a car. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. We'll see in the actual database. It's not going to create a whole sort of user column. It'll turn it into an ID for us. That's what the Django RM is going to do behind the scenes. It's just going to set up that um, that relationship that we were doing in MySQL workbench. 
So it'll actually only be the owner's ID that you see inside the table. Okay. It's just that when we're working with the Django ORM, we're going to specify the object itself, not the ID. Okay. All right, so we did it now. Let's go, uh, let me just refresh these tables down here. So now I also have this main car table right here. And let's click on that and look at what's in there. So here I've got a Honda Civic and then the year. And then if I go over here, I see the owner ID. That's Jessica's ID, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. All right. So the owner that is the object, what is its owner is your name of the toy in the other? Well, it depends on what you call it. Like it, it might the word owner might necess not necessarily yeah. apply to the situation that you're working with. Yeah. Okay. All right, so what if I wanted Jessica to have another car? No problem there, right? I can easily create another one. Um, what would be your next car purchase? I know yours is pretty new, but... Toyota. Toyota, all right. M M4? RAV4. Oh, RAV4. Okay. All right, all right. 2019. <laughs> 2019. Cool. Boom. We created that. Let's just refresh this guy here. Do I have a refresh? Uh, oh, no. Whatever. I'll do it down here. So here we go. Now we've got this second car inside here, and you can see that they both belong to the same owner. Right? Okay. So what if I want to see all of Jessica's cars? I might want to do that, right? Let's do that. So let's say Jessica.cars.all. And then I just want to see some information about those cars. So I'm going to call this other method called values. Whew. Man, that's not super readable. But you guys can see that we have all the information about her two different cars, right? We've got the Honda Civic that's up here. And then we've got the Toyota RAV4 down there. Okay. Well, that's the dictionary that returned. No, it returned this query set. Great. Query set is like a list. It's something that we can iterate through. And then you can see inside that query set, we've got these different objects, right? There's something friendlier than that, right? Than one car. Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, we can iterate through them if you want, <laughs> if you want to do it that way. So yeah, we, we kind of showed this yesterday, I think. But if we wanted to say for car in jessica.cars.all, let's say I want to print out car, and then we can go double under dict. So that would sort of print out the car as a dictionary. Oh, that wasn't much help. Much more helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it kind of does, right? I mean, you you can make your iteration a little bit more explicit too. If I wanted to sort of print only specific pieces about you, um, yeah. Yeah, is it is it not double under str or something like that? Double under R E P R. Oh. Def repr self. Okay. Cool. Cool. Another thing to look into for you guys. <laughs> repr. Repr. So yeah, whenever we see these these double unders like that, the dunder, these are so-called magic methods. You know, they're built-in methods that are available to us. All right, cool. So I'll take a peek into that a little bit later on. Um, does this pretty much make sense to you, what we're doing with uh, cars and Jessica and so forth? So what if I want to delete one of Jessica's cars? How could I go about doing that? 
sledgehammer. <laughs> so let's try to first get, get a reference to one of her cars. So I'm just going to say, oh, indentation correct. Okay, so let's say I want Jessica's Honda Civic, the very first one, right? All right, so I'll just say Honda Civic, and then I'm going to say equals Jessica dot cars dot first. That will give me the first one that belongs to her, right? Okay. Now I want to remove that from her list of cars. How can I do that? Can I just delete it? Yeah, because I have that, that uh, cascade set up, right? Let's see, Honda Civic dot delete. Okay, so we deleted that guy. Let's take a look at her cars again. So I'll say Jessica dot cars dot all dot values. Okay, so it did successfully get, get deleted. And right now, we only have the uh, RAV4 left in there. All right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so, so if we had a situation where we we're trying to remove Jessica, if we didn't have that cascade, that means that we would also have to remove her cars. Or, or change the reference so that they belong to someone else, right? All right, yeah, that's a good point. All right, cool. So we've deleted one of our cars. <clears throat> now, I think we're pretty good on our cars. Let's go back in and build this team model, right? So that we can have a person belong to multiple teams and a team have multiple users. All right, so let's exit out of here. And then inside here, let's create a new class. So I've got class team models dot model. Okay. So we said each team was going to have a name. Yes, it is. Good catch. Thanks, Juan. Cool. Each team is going to have a name, and we'll just say that's a, a char field again. Okay, I'll bring that down. We're going to have a mascot as well. That'll be fun. I'll have my timestamps. Okay. Finally, um, I want to connect a team to users, right? So let's say team will have players. We'll call them that. And then players is going to be a models dot many to many field. Okay. And one thing I want to point out here is that when we are doing a many to many relationship, you can do it from either class. I could have done this inside the user class. Instead, I'm doing it inside the team class, but it, it's up to you. You can decide where you want. So the many-to-many -many field is going to refer to what? What should I pass inside here as the first argument? User. User, correct. Because that's what I'm trying to connect it to. Okay. I presume I'm probably going to need this on delete. Models.cascade. Let's try to do it without. Most likely it'll growl at us, but that's cool. So I'm also going to want the related name, though, again. So what the related name is going to do is it's going to create this hidden field on my user so that I can access all that user's teams. Okay. So I'm going to say related name. What do you guys think the best related name would be for this? That's a little closer. Team. Why don't we say teams, teams. right? Because, because they can be on multiple teams. OK. okay. And then let's go in and see if we can actually make this migrations file. So we'll say python manage.py 
make migrations. Okay, it made the migrations. I guess we didn't need the cascade in this case. Because what's going to happen if a user gets deleted from our, uh, from our database, that doesn't mean that the team needs to be deleted, right? Because the team wasn't really dependent on the user. The team has many players, not just one, right? Okay. So we didn't have to worry about that. All right. Now let's uh, migrate it over. So we'll say python manage.py migrate. Oops, not migration. Okay, so we successfully migrated, so we're in good shape. So let's get back into the shell. Python manage.py shell. Excellent. Let's create some teams. Right? So first we, we need to import always. So for main.models, let's import asterisk. Actually, no, let's be explicit. User car and team. All right. Now how do I create a team? You guys are probably getting used to seeing this now. team.objects.create. All right. And let's um, let's give this team a name, right? What do we want our first team to be called? Javascript. What? Javascript. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was <laughs> JavaScript. All right, that's a good one. All right, what's the mascot of JavaScript? Python. <laughs> it's a Python. <laughs> All right, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Very good. Cool. So let's just create it. We don't need to add any uh, any team members right now, right? So we've created one team. And then if I refresh this down here, our little SQLite Explorer, you can see that now we've got this new table, main underscore team, right? Hey, look at this. What happened here? I also have this middle table. Let me expand this a little bit. You see how I have this main team players? What's that for? It's to connect each team to each player, right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. So Django is doing all that stuff for us under the hood. We didn't have to manually set that up. Pretty nice. Cool. So let's say I want to add some people to my uh, my uh, JavaScript team. Let's grab a reference to this team, right? So we'll say JavaScript equals team.objects. And I'm just going to say it's the first one in there because we know that's the only one we have for now. Okay. Now I want to add um, a couple different players here. So actually, let's just add everyone to this team because it's a good team, right? Okay, over here. So not Jessica. Oh, oh not Stefan. Oh man, he's always getting the short end of the stick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so javascript dot players dot add. Okay. So every time I call this type this method here, it means that I want to add somebody to my players list as as it is. Okay. So if I want to add Jessica, I could say user dot objects dot first because I know Jessica is my first user here. Does this bother you guys? Do you want me to set a variable for Jessica before I just put her inside this? Because if it does, I can do that. All right, let me make it a little more clear so that we don't get confused. All right, so let's say Jessica again equals user.objects.first. All right, now let's add Jessica to, jo to the JavaScript team. So I'm going to say javascript.players.add, and then I'm going to pass Jessica in to this method right here. Okay, 
And now let's see. Um, so if I go JavaScript dot players dot all dot values, let's see if we can see her information. Ah, look at this. We have this query set. So it's kind of like a list, something that we can iterate through. And inside there is Jessica. Okay. Notice how it's giving us the entire Jessica object. So that's pretty cool. This is going to come in handy when we're actually doing this with our web pages. As we're sort of working through a list, we'll have access to each object in its entirety, like that. All right, let's add another player. So let's say I want to get a reference to Nick. I might say Nick equals user.objects.get. I know that Nick's ID is three, so I can get him by ID. We'll just say ID equals three. And I want to do the same thing with him, so I'll say javascript.players.all, whoops, dot add, actually is what I meant to say, and then I'm just going to pass in Nick here. No, you're going to want to do it like this, but um, if, if you want to kind of like take a shortcut, which is what I, what I was sort of trying to show you before, you could say something like javascript.players.add. So let's say I'm trying to add Stefan, and I know his ID is 4 in this case. I could say user.objects.get ID equals 4. Oops, not 3. Okay. Yeah. So I could, I could get him inside this function call. Is, is there a There's a reason kind of why I wasn't doing this, though, because I, I looked around and I sensed that maybe there was some confusion about this. So I don't want you guys to think, oh, I always have to do it this way. No, you don't. You, know, you can get a reference to that person first and then add, add him or her after. That's fine. Yes? But it, it is kind of redundant to add a variable to the objects, because you have to do it to like every object, wouldn't you? Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit of a pain in, pain in the butt. If I'm only going to use Nick one time, if I only need to reference him one time, it would be kind of nice to just do it in here. That way I don't even need a, rep, a variable for Nick. Now if I'm going to use his variable multiple times, it does make sense to save it as a variable. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you pass in uh, multiple variables at that function? Is that add function? At the same time? Yeah. I think that may be possible. In fact, it, it wasn't possible in the older version of Django, but let me see. Add multiple many to many Django. Well, these are old answers. Would it be able to do like a chaining type thing where you put like dot add and then dot add as a Oh, I see what you're saying. Dot add, dot add. Does it return? But see, I think I believe. I don't know that it's returning back the actual object for us. We could try it. Yeah. One to one field. Let, let me just see if this is possible to add multiple at the same time. Um, hmm. Can the same many to many relationship exist on a model multiple times? What? Oh. That's a different question, actually. All right, now we've got another thing to look into. Thanks, guys. <laughs> no, these are good questions, though. Same time. All right. Um, so what if, what if I want to remove certain people from a team, right? I can actually do it from either side. So I should be able to remove the relationship between, say, Jessica and this team or the team from Jessica, kind of however I want to do it. So let's make sure, I still have this reference to Jessica, so what if I say javascript.players.remove Jessica. Okay, and now let's take a look at the players one more time. So now you can see I only have Nick and Stefan. She's been removed. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. 
So that was one way we can do it, right? We can remove it from the side of the team itself. What if I want to remove it from the side of the player? So let's say that um, Stefan's on my team right now. I want to remove him from the team, but I can also remove it from his side too. So let's gra grab a reference to Stefan. So Stefan equals user.objects.last, because he was my last user. And then we'll say Stefan.teams.remove JavaScript. Okay, and now let's look at the players on JavaScript one more time. Nick is the only one on that team. So I've removed it from Stefan's side as well. What I mean is that I grabbed a reference to Stefan. I set a variable for him right here. And then I said Stefan.teams, so that's the list of all the teams that he's on. And then I said I wanted to remove this specific team, this JavaScript team. So I can take it away from both sides. And I could also add from both sides as well. So if I had a reference to Stefan, which I do right now, I can also say Stefan.teams.add, and I still have a reference to this JavaScript team. Okay. And now if we look at the players again, we'll see that our query set has two things in it. It's got Nick, and lo and behold, Stefan is back on my team. So I can add him from the team either from his object or from the team object, either way. That's how the many-to-many the -many kind of can, you can go from either side. That's what's sort of nifty about it. Kind of cool. Can, can you see the table of the Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at that. That's a good idea. So here, if we look at this team players table here, so you can see we have two relationships that were established. So the team ID, I only have one team. It's just that JavaScript team, right? Here, I'm connecting Nick to the team, because his ID was 3. And then I'm also connecting Stefan, his ID was 4. All right. That's what's accomplishing the many-to-many -many for us. But you guys can see how much nicer it is to work with this Django RM. We don't even have to write any join queries. Because if we were doing this in, straight, in regular MySQL, we would have to join these tables. It's doing that work for us. Makes it pretty nice, right? Cool. Good to know. Yeah, it's really good to know. Um, some different frameworks may use ORMs, so you won't be you won't always be interacting with the database directly. But yeah, if you if you get familiar with it, it'd be good. It's going to be a little bit trickier on the join queries. Have you seen any of those in the platform yet? Yeah. No? Okay. Okay. So once so yeah, maybe when you get to the many to many section, I'm not sure if they still have those queries in there, but um, they do? Uh, second, uh, second part of the uh, MySQL, they have uh, assigned it uh, when you know, join uh, the tables uh, data together to uh, query. Are you talking about? But are you talking about web fundamentals yeah, or in the. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'm not, I'm not yeah, because that's what I, I, I wasn't sure. I haven't looked to see because um, the platform just got updated recently because of the new Django version that we're using. So I'm not positive if it still has the queries for the ones where you have many-to-many -many type relationship. Maybe. Yeah. So it's good good to be aware of. Don't um, don't freak out about it. <laughs> if that makes sense. It looks. I mean, it yeah. looks simple in a way. Mm -hmm. like, it's like English. Yeah. The ones that, the ones that we were doing yesterday, sort of create, read, update, and delete. Those are pretty simple. I'm sure you guys can manage those. Definitely no problem. Cool. So that's all for today. Any any other final questions about what we covered with the many to many? One to many, many, many to many. Can uh, you go back to your models? Mm -hmm.
Yeah. And can I see the end of the team? Yeah, I see. Yeah, and let me uh, close out the sidebar there, too, so it's a little bit obvious. So the big thing, too, is this related name. It gave us a hidden field on my user objects of teams, or cars in this case. Well, I, I'm only calling it hidden because if you look up here at our at our user model, there is that field wasn't there, right? But it will be available once we do the migration. Cool. So one thing I'm going to try to do today um, with you guys during during the downtime is just some little one-on-ones. I'll just pull you aside for a few minutes. We'll uh, we'll just chat about how things are going in the program and that sort of thing. And, Make sure everything's going well for you guys. All right? Cool. Let me stop the video here.